Hey everybody, it's Austin Ward from Letterman Row. It's another edition of Buck IQ, the first one to feature Jake Stoneburner, uh, bringing his expertise to the tight ends and probably, like usual, going to push for using them more in this offense this year. Yeah, we'll try. Okay. We'll try. Uh, so we're going to look at Marcus Ball. Uh, you know, he's gone now, but just the, the way that Ohio State used him last year and a couple effective plays, and, and Jake just, you know, it seems like that middle of the field, that area is where Ohio State maybe hasn't exploited nearly as much as it could have the last couple of years. Yeah, and you'll see in these clips where it's really productive plays when if you can actually implement them and use them, you can actually score touchdowns in big moments, and we'll show you that. Yeah, and Ohio State had some success with that. Of course, they're not going to be able to use this same piece because Marcus Ball is gone, but there's a handful of guys uh, with this, this same sort of ability to help the Buckeyes this season, uh, and we're going to see exactly how they do that starting now. Only six for Nebraska. JT Barrett. All right, so Stoney, here's the first example maybe of where Marcus Baugh, the tight end position in particular, comes into play for Ohio State. Took this one, it's late in the game against Nebraska, but first and 10 down inside the red zone. You know, what is it about, if you're standing there, you're Marcus Baugh, you see this, this defense, what goes through your mind in that tight end spot? Well, based on the play call, Marcus has got to know he is a main target. He's got the speed out, speed out right at the first down markers. He's the main guy, so he's got to get open. He's got to run a great route. Um, your first thoughts are, I got I to make sure I run this route at the right depth, mm -hmm. right timing, so JT can get me the ball and I can score. You don't have the right depth, the right timing. You might have a wide open area or a wide open route, but if it's not in the right time, it's not going to work out like this does right here. And, and, the, and just that tight end, you know, that value here, the middle of the field, taking up, maybe getting a matchup on a linebacker. How much does that you know, help other things? Why is this something that can be so effective for Ohio State moving forward? If a tight end can be a linebacker and a safety, that means they gotta keep an eye on him. And that means the wide receivers and the running backs are one-on-one -on -one with guys who have trouble tackling. And anytime you can have a guy inside the middle who can block and catch, adds just tremendous pressure because you're putting linebackers who are covering wide receiver type athletes who can't who aren't supposed to be covering those guys and that just adds more pressure in the middle and opens up things on the outside the run game all sorts of things we go move forward here uh, marcus ball a much more pressurized situation yeah probably in the comeback and this was a pretty you know famous play from ohio state last season but when you look at when you look at Marcus Baugh here and, and what he sees, what JT Barrett sees, and what's going through the mind of a tight end in this situation. So right now we got a little play action, and all he's doing is just trying to beat this guy right here, get over top of him. If you rewind it, you can see there's no, it is wide open. Beat this guy, you score, and the Penn State's defender has his eyes in the backfield a little bit. As soon as Marcus, you can see as soon as he gets even, his head turns around because he knows he wins. Right there, his head's already back, win. And so when you're thinking of a play like this, you see that wide open, like I said, you want to, it's pressure, big situation, make sure you get your depth, your route, get your head around, and you know, just your practice reps, let that take over, because this is a simple play, he's just running straight up the field. Arcing a little bit, but this, this linebacker's got his eyes in the backfield, and as soon as you see that, haul downfield, and you, you got yourself a touchdown. You're saying he knows here at the six that he's got this win. Is it, do you know when you're at the line of scrimmage and you see the, the way maybe Penn State is lined up, what does this tell you? I mean, do you think that right off the bat this is going to be a win, or do you not know till here? You don't know. This guy, as soon as you could, just could turn with you and run, you'd be covered the whole time. But he, you can see he is looking right here, and Marcus is even with him. And if you have a great quarterback, they know, okay, we got a winner, because this guy isn't going to turn his hips, find the ball in enough time in order to stop that, and this guy doesn't even turn at all. <laughs> um, if, he, you know, if he turns his hip, he's still behind the eight ball, because, look, I mean, if you rewind it, Marcus, right there, Marcus has him beat right there. Because he's he's back playing Marcus full sprint, head turned around. You got a great quarterback who's going to put it right on the money. Easy, that's, easy, easy. That's a tight end working right over the middle of the field. That's that's where you have long been pushing for that, right? I mean, oh that's, yeah. I mean, that's think how easy of a play is. Oh, he little play action. This guy's put in a bind. What do I do? Is it run ball? Too late. Touchdown. And then we've got a similar concept here from another another big game. Uh, this isn't the first time on Buck IQ that Michigan's defense has uh, has looked a little suspect. But go, you again had Marcus right? Baugh, a little bit different, but he's still getting in the middle of the field. And to me, Stoney, the route looks very similar. Yep. 
it more of a little play action you can see he's kind of arcing to you know mess with this guy's head think okay i gotta run play run play coming but same action as soon as he's even with him again heads turn win and marcus has even guys he i'm sure he knows i mean there is nobody here as soon as you beat that guy it's it's a house call and it's the same thing you you i'm sure he was told sell to run a little bit but as soon as you can run by that guy go because I mean, he's even got him beat there. This guy has no chance because they're <laughs> flat-footed. They're looking at the quarterback, looking at the running back, and the guy's already passed him running full speed. There's no recovery from that. Is this part of, you know, maybe the tendency for the Ohio State offense that to crush Michigan's defense? <laughs> or well, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But um, you know, just the way that the tight ends are used, you had to do this. Jeff Hireman had to do this. Like Nick Vanette, you guys had to block so much for the running game and make a lot of your, you know, big plays in that respect. It seems like this is the best. Way. You can get that play action, turn a tight end loose. It's going to catch somebody off guard. It certainly did Michigan here. When you have running backs, Ohio State's constantly producing. They got to always worry about the run game, and type of, this type of stuff. If you have a guy who can run and spread the field and catch, puts so much pressure on the defense because these, these guys don't know. You, you got Mike Weber back here. He's an all all American running back. We got to worry about that. Whoop, Marcus is right by you, sure. and that just adds so much. Um, Stress to a defensive coordinator because they're like, okay, well, you know, what are we playing for here? <laughs> you know, what, what, what are we playing for the run? Well, how do I how do I coach this guy? Because if he plays him running that route, who, look who's open right here, wide open running the ball. So th it just puts the defensive coordinator and the defense in a huge bind when you have a guy who can stretch the field up the middle. This play and the Penn State game. I mean, the whole middle of the field is left open. Is that you think teams that? You know, I've seen what Ohio State wanted to do, that they don't test the middle of the field, or just a, a, maybe the nature of the defensive call here? I think nature, a little bit of both. Nature of the defensive call, um, situationally, and it oh, looks like they're like in a two deep man, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's just going to leave the field wide open. And hate to say it, number seven, but <laughs> you're not doing your job. Probably not an enjoyable film study up there. I don't know what their version of Buck IQ is, but it. Probably this isn't a game that's going to go down well for him. No, definitely not. Um, he's struggling, right? I don't think that's a good amount of separation with <laughs> nobody over top. Uh, that usually doesn't bode well. Um, but, I mean, he was put in a bind. There was no one. I mean, what is he supposed to do? Might be his, the defense coordinator for Michigan might, I don't <laughs> might not have, be making a great have some different things right to say about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ohio State's going to have to have a different guy running these routes this season. Marcus Baugh is gone. Uh, that'll be an interesting training camp battle. We'll have Jake Stoneburner, of course, bring his expertise to that when August rolls around and then everything after that throughout the season. Uh, it's great to have him in here at Letterman Row and back with Buck IQ for the first time to look at the tight end play and how that can help Ohio State. So for Stoney, I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time.